Mr. Speaker, I yield three minutes to the gentleman from Texas. The gentleman from Texas is recognized for three minutes. I thank the Speaker. Quote, it wasn't an accident. Policing in our country is inherently and intentionally racist. Duante Wright was met with aggression and violence. I am done with those who condone government-funded murder. No more policing, incarceration, and militarization. It can't be reformed. Thus said Congresswoman Tlaib, who was just down here talking about this. Congressman Omar, you can't really reform a department that is rotten to the root. That is the truth of what my colleagues on the other side of the aisle think about law enforcement. The gentleman from Massachusetts is down here besmirching the 21 members of our body who said no to the politicization of Capitol Police. You want to know why it's not in here? Because my colleagues on the other side of the aisle want to turn Capitol Police into political pawns. That's the truth. We had a resolution in the last Congress, H.R. 1085. I voted for it, giving a congressional gold medal to the brave men and women of Capitol Police who stood here on January 6th. But then, my colleagues on the other side of the aisle, they didn't want to leave it there. They then had another resolution a mere two months later when they wanted to play politics. They're playing political games. Instead of honoring our men and women in law enforcement, Democrats played political games on a different tragedy, April 2nd, 2021, when Officer Billy Evans was killed and Officer Kenneth Shaver was injured by a man obsessed with the Nation of Islam who slammed his vehicle into the north barricade of the U.S. Capitol complex. That didn't fit the narrative. That didn't fit the narrative of my Democratic colleagues. See, they want to be able to come down here and make claims that they're defunding the police that we are because we dare to stand up and say we should have fiscal responsibility and set a top-line cap. My colleagues on the other side of the aisle want to besmirch Republicans for cutting out all manners of programs. But they bring no solutions for the American people about ending the $32 trillion of debt, destroying the dollar, causing inflation, undermining jobs, destroying our country. They know exactly what they're doing, and they're doing it on purpose. But we're going to stand with the men and women of blue across this country. That's what this resolution is about. It's about standing with them and my colleagues on the other side of the aisle, spent every waking moment undermining them, saying we should defund them when there were riots on the streets and our cities were burning to the ground. My Democratic colleagues didn't care. They allowed it to happen. They knew exactly what they were doing, and that's what this is about. I would add this. My father carries a card around with him. He's 80 years old. That card was given to him by his father, a chief of police of a small West Texas town. It's called Jackie, the son of a hard-boiled cop. You think I'm a hard-boiled co copper for writing a mere 43. Well, perhaps I'm thinking of Jackie and all that he meant to me. How's that? Tell you all about it. Well, stranger, the boy was my son. Gentleman's time is expired. I 30 yield seconds. Uh, 30 seconds. 30 seconds. To the God, what I'd give to hear daddy once more when the day's work is done. The driver was just in a hurry. He didn't intend any harm. But the sun and stars quit shining when I picked up my boy's lifeless form. Well, mister, I'll tear up this ticket. I don't want to pinch anyone, but I'd ride this motor through hellfires to protect another man's son. So the next time you feel like speeding or passing a boulevard stop, just pause and remember my Jackie, the son of a hard-boiled cop. My dad carries it with him to this day, 80 years old.